Hello everyone and welcome back to another Ruby on Rails 6 tutorial video. Uh, I'm just doing this one as a bit of an intermission between the uh, first and the second episode of this week's 20 and 20 challenge. Uh, so I thought this might be a good way to, uh, you know, fill the void between videos as I'm completely recreating the project now that uh, we've sort of decided in the comments that, uh, you know, people want to see a more involved project. So I'm creating like a shopping cart and stuff. Uh, for restaurant orders. But um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by typing code space dot to open up this project in uh, Visual Studio Code. You can use whatever text editor you'd like. Uh, and I'm going to generate a controller. So I'll say Rails G controller pages and I'll give it a home action. Um, and then once this is done uh, creating the pages controller, we can use uh, yarn. So we'll say yarn add and we wanna add bootstrap. Uh, we want to add uh, to, to jQuery and we want to add popper.js. So we can hit enter and that will run the yarn commands. And while that is running, we can come to config routes.rb and we can switch this get to a root and this slash to a hash and we can save this. Uh, we can then run a Rails S command just to make sure that our application is working as we expect it to. And after that, we can come over to, let me just run this so we can see. Uh, we can come over to app, um, JavaScript, packs, and then application.js. And then in here, we just want to do, uh, I guess, two things, really. Uh, we want to do a uh, import bootstrap. Oops, bootstrap. And then we want to do an import, and uh, we'll just do dot slash src slash application.scss. Uh, you can do this pretty much anywhere. We're just gonna create a folder here inside packs. Uh, and then we'll save this and inside packs, we'll create a new folder called src and inside of src, we'll create a new file and call it application.scss. Inside here, we'll just type at import quotes tilde bootstrap slash scss slash bootstrap put in the semicolon, save it. Uh, we can close this and we can close this application.js. Although before I close application.js, if you do run into an issue with one of your .js.erb files not working with jQuery, uh, one of the ways that I found of fixing this is if you just come in here and you do uh, global dot dollar sign equals uh, lowercase j capital Q query, this fixes that um, js.erb not working. So if you're using like remote calls where you're updating a div's contents after you save in like the controller and stuff, uh, this is how I've managed to fix it, but you don't need it for the purposes of this video. So that is the JS app or the application.js all sorted. Uh, the next thing we have to do is come into config and webpack and environment. And I'm gonna full screen this so we can see this. And in between these two lines, we want to say const webpack equals require webpack. Below that, we want to do environment.plugins.append. And we want to do parentheses, uh, single quote, provide, comma, new webpack dot capital P provide capital P plugin, one word. Uh, then parentheses and braces, and then you can hit enter. Uh, and then we have to do three quick definitions. So we'll say dollar sign colon, uh, single quote, jQuery, comma, uh, lowercase j capital Q query, colon, jQuery. So we're just defining jQuery a couple times. Uh, but then we also have to do popper on the last line. So for this, we just say popper colon, square braces. And the first element is popper.js comma, the second one is uh, just default. And then you can save this. Uh, and the last thing that I'll show you how to do, actually we can refresh this page, um, but if you want to add in any bootstrap elements and you're not quite sure how to do it, the best way to do it, in my opinion, is usually just to go over to Google and look for bootstrap for documentation, um, documentation. And the first link is always the uh, introduction to bootstrap. So you just click it, and if you come down to components, it'll take you to the Bootstrap components page. Uh, and for example, we could come in here and we could grab like the uh, nav bar, I guess, and just scroll down and you can see this one has a search bar. So we'll hit copy. We can come over to views, 
layouts and create a new file and just call it underscore uh, navbar.html.erb. We can paste the navbar in here and maybe we'll customize this a bit. So we'll switch, um, we'll switch this home to just be like a root path thing. And we can switch this navbar brand up here to just be like, I don't know, DNN. Uh, and then if we come over to our application.html.erb, we can render this by opening up some Ruby code. So we'll say uh, open angle bracket percent equals render single quotes layouts slash navbar. We can save this and we can move this over here and come back to our application and refresh the page. And there is your bootstrap uh, navbar working. So if we resize it, you can see here that um, it'll like collapse and, you know, reform itself whenever you resize the page. Uh, just real quick, a couple other things we could do if we come into like pages home. Um, you can, uh, you know, you can do like the call dash fours and say like this is the first column. And then a uh, call that oops dot call dash eight. This column is bigger. And maybe we'll just give this a style equal to color black. And we'll give this a style equal to color, I don't know, red. We'll save this. And if we refresh the page, um, it's, uh, let's do background hyphen color. Hyphen color. So you can see here that um, these two are on different uh, rows, but if you want to put them on the same row, you can do a uh, just a dot row wrapper around them. So we'll move this div around it and we'll save it like this. So you can see here we have uh, the first div with the column dash four and then the second one, and they're both inside of this row. So you're kind of arranging these columns to be in the same row. And if we refresh, you can see that the call dash four is taking up one third of the screen and the call dash eight is taking up the other two thirds. Uh, that's kind of because the um, columns themselves are, there's 12 per row and you're sort of allocating all 12 right here. So like the bigger the number, the more it'll, you know, take up in terms of, uh, of space. But yeah, that's going to do it for this tutorial. I know it's a short one and it's a little bit repetitive if you've watched like the Rails 5 version, but if you're not familiar with how to set up Bootstrap in Rails 6, I figured this might be helpful because it is a completely different setup uh, situation compared to Rails 5. Uh, but yeah, I hope this video helped. If it did, remember to like it. And if it didn't, remember to dislike it so we don't subject other people to bad tutorials because we want the good tutorials to go to the top search results and we want the bad ones to go to the bottom so don't be afraid to downvote stuff that doesn't help you but uh yeah that's gonna do it for me and i will see you in the next video